Hey everybody, Kate with Crate Insider, and I'm here today with Don Blackshear from Pace Performance. And Don, I know that you and I recently talked about the 525, the CT525, and that there were some changes, but I see that we have some things in front of us. So, so tell me about what we're looking at here. Well, the CT525 had some durability issues, and it all basically pointed back to a piston issue with the engine. Uh, the original engines, uh, the OE style engine, used a hyperutectic piston, and due to the stresses in today's racing applications, that we found we were having a failure problem with it, and the piston was actually fracturing, and then of course it would be in a zillion pieces, and then the connecting rod would come out the side of the block, and you'd have det detrimental failure to the engine. So when we did a bunch of engine teardowns and looked at exactly what was going on with it, and we found the piston was to be the issue and the culprit of it. Uh, we contacted GM, contacted Mala Motorsports, and we have developed a forged piston uh, for the CT525. And this piston is a direct replacement for the existing piston that's in the engine. The only difference between the two pistons, other than the forging versus hyperutectic, is this piston has a thinner ring package in it uh, than this one. This has a 1.5 millimeter ring package, and this has a 1.2 millimeter ring package. So you have a little bit of less friction in the rotation of the engine. Now, when we did the piston in the testing, because I basically hand-built and did the field testing for GM on this engine, uh, we changed the piston first and see what happened. Well, then we had a rod bolt failure later on with it. So then in turn, what was happening, this is the connecting rod that's in the CT525. It's a powdered metal I-beam rod that's bushed, has a floating wrist pin. But the issue we had was these are a torque-to-yield rod bolt. So basically... Uh, you torque it to 15 foot-pounds and then you rotate it to stretch the bolt to get the proper stretch in it. So what happened was is we were having a rod bolt failure issue then once we fixed the piston problem. So ARP developed a, a rod bolt for us to take care of that problem and we did that and then the issue was fixed. So we've got numerous over seasons of racing on it with no failures with it and uh, now we have a dependable engine. Well, and I, obviously that's going to be so good for so many racers, you know, especially anybody who's been considering the 525 and maybe saw some of these, you know, that had some failures out there. So this would be a lot better. But I'm going to back you up for a second. I've never heard the word hyperutectic. So can, it, it, I don't even know if I said that right. But um, can you explain a little bit what that is? Well, a hyperutectic piston, there's, there's three basic versions. You have a cast piston, and a hyperutectic is basically a halfway between a cast and a forged. It's a little stronger piston. Uh, this piston's utilized in a lot of production engines now. Uh, the problem with the CT525 was just the RPM and the power output of the engine. And, of course, you're putting them in late models and modifieds and sprint cars which have the ability to traction the car up so the engine sees tremendous loads that it wouldn't normally see. And under those conditions, the piston would basically fracture and come apart into a zillion pieces and fail. And with the forged, is, is am I thinking right, like where, you know, making swords is forged? I mean, blacksmithing is forged. How is it that, how, what is the production process? Obviously, they're not just stamping them out. No. And that, that would be cast, yeah. correct? Correct. This, this piston being a forged piston, it goes through the forging process. But this is the same basic material and the design that we use in engines that make thousands of horsepower. You know, I mean, drag race applications are forged pistons. Open circle track engines are forged pistons. So, and you don't see any durability issues with those. And that's something that we went to this. The piston is actually now overkill for the engine, which is a good thing because it just gives the consumer a better product that'll give him more durability on the racetrack. Well, and then since we're looking at the connecting rods, were there any issues with the connecting rods or is just the... Uh the rod bolts that were the issue? Well, they, out of the 12 engines that GM sent for us to disassemble before we started this project, we found no connecting rod failures. All of the failures that were in the 12 engines were due to bearing clearance and spinning a bearing or a piston breaking. We never saw a rod failure itself. It was always one part or the other that was creating it. Now, the new engine, the original engine was built on OE bearing clearance specifications which OE engines, as everyone knows, runs thinner weight oil and things of that nature in it. Well, typical circle track racer, he's going to run 1550 or 2050 in his oil, or for his oil. So that's going to create a problem because when you have bearing clearances that are then in the, the one and six tenths to one and eight tenths thousandths measurement, 2050 oil doesn't work very well in them. 
it won't lubricate properly. Well, it's because you're pushing so hard and putting so much pressure on the engine, is that right? Well, what's happening is the oil is so thick, the clearances are so tight, so it struggles with keeping the bearing lubricated and keeping it suspended off the crankshaft. So in turn, the engine now is hand-built, and it also has race-type bearing clearances, and it's recommended to have a minimum of a 1550 weight oil in it. So that corrected those issues. Well, and I, I think that there are so much um, opportunity with the 525. It's, I know I've seen a lot of the racers who have come from supers. They've gone into 604s and just don't feel like they've got enough power. What are you seeing for power out of the 525? Well, the 525s basically, as from GM with the factory timing curve in them, uh, on an engine dyno, they will be 550 horsepower at around 490 foot-pounds of torque is about an average on a pump gas. Now, you can alter the timing curve in it. There's some series that we work with with Dirt Car UMP modifieds. We have a DC-18 package that has a spec timing curve in it. So there is a little bit of adjustability of the engine with timing curve and then, of course, the fuel. You know, we have cars that run on pump gas. We have them that run on alcohol, E85, or, you know, any of those types of fuels are going to vary the horsepower increase of the engine depending on, you know, what fuel you utilize. Excellent. Well, and of course, if you're looking for a 525 engine, we have them here at Crate Insider. And then we've got some packages over here at Pace Performance. Or you can talk to a local engine builder, correct? That's maybe yes. there's there's some of the engine builders that are working with the 525s now, now that we've uh, we've taken this next step in the 525s lifespan. Yes. And, and the engine builders that are involved in a lot of the crate world also have access to these engines. And our sealed engine packages from Pace that we do specifically for dirt car or or the Knoxville Raceway Sprint Car Program, uh, they're all open to those also. So you could purchase it from Hendron Racing Engines here in North Carolina or any of the, the shops that we work with uh, with the Crate Engine Program. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Don. I learned a lot about this forged piston thing. I hope that was helpful to you, and I look forward to seeing you in another video.